Hey everyone, I'm Patrick Brown. Uh, welcome to monthly project number 50. I can't believe that I've done 50 of these now. Um, that's pretty insane. I've loved every bit of it. Um, for this project, I wanted to do a high detail challenge. And this is going to really push everybody's capabilities and skills and see what they can really do. So the idea is to push yourself as far and beyond what you're used to doing. So because as an artist in the industry, if you can do really high detail, uh, it's, it can be really impressive. You can really showcase your work. Um, it actually can open up a lot of new doors as well. Um, honing in on those little details, even if it comes down to a belt buckle or wrinkles in folds in the skin, fabric, things like that, super high detail. And by doing this challenge, I think it's gonna unlock a lot of new skills in some of these artists. So I'm excited to dive in and have a look and see what everybody's came up with. Uh, let's check them all out. Each month I pick three submissions to critique. Uh, so congrats to Jacob, Patrick and Elijah. I'm gonna give you some feedback soon. All right, let's start with Andrew's submission. Here's your high detail uh, Batman. You've got armored Batman here. Look at all this beautiful detail. This is what it's all about. Yeah, really pushing yourself here, I can see. Have a look at all the little scratches, nicks. And I really like the, um, you got that kind of uh, cross-hatching fade going on with the, with the line work, which is very clever. Suits Batman very well too. Yeah, this is looking really good, um, Andrew. Very good balance with the black shading there in the, in the line work as well. You've really pushed yourself, well done. All right, next up, Paul Cameron. Have a look at this. This is this is what it's all about, absolutely. Um, this high detail challenge, and you've really just, oh my God, this is insane. I could keep zooming in, and it just, you know, it doesn't lose detail. This is what I'm talking about. Like, you zoom right in and have a look. You can see every little thread in the ropes and the string around him. The skin, look Look at the amount of effort and, and um, the attention to detail all throughout just the body there in just that one area. This is insane. And um, I love the fact that you've just, like the armor, every little nick tells a story, you know, there's a bullet hole there and there's a scratch here. It's like battle damaged and sci-fi kind of gun. That is insane. I love what you've done here. Look at the skin and the, yeah, the mouth, the teeth, even here, look, right through there. Like that is just crazy. So you've really, really outdone yourself here. This is, you know, what it's all about, you know, really looking at what you've done and then being like, okay, let's take it even further and just keep going and keep going. All the little hairs, these little big thick hairs that he's got on the side of his face and around the eyes. So that's insane, Paul. I really love that. And you've also got another version here, which is, because uh, this one's like rendered. So here's just the inks alone, the ink work. And I love that you've sent that through as well. You know, even in the jewelry on his, the beads on his hair, the braids, uh, what, I'm not sure what to call them, but uh, <laughs> I absolutely love that. You've really outdone yourself. I hope you had fun with that. And it's really cool to see your potential and what you can really push yourself to, isn't it? So uh, absolutely well done on that, Paul. All right, next is Liam's submission. This is for Stranger Things. Wow, you've really done a killer job on this one. Have a look at this. So, like a, an entire scene. You mentioned in the email that you were going to do just Vecna, and, uh, but then you, you kind of got carried away and you wanted to do an entire scene and everyone else. Uh, really cool idea as well with this whole setup and um, and 11 right in the middle this is so cool and I especially love the scene below it's like the upside down world and uh, Demi Gorgon right there and have a look at the detail though it's insane everything all the all the specs like this is a great poster really cool I love what you've done there if I was going to give you a little bit of feedback um, I would probably, I would have loved to see more focus on Vecna's details throughout. Like he is detailed, but you know, with the line work, especially in the drawing. So just really 
focusing in on all of the little like vines or whatever you want to call it on him, all the muscle detail. Um, I would have loved to see more of that. At the moment, it's a little, it's kind of taken over with a lot of these textures throughout. So it gets a little hard to see some of that, but he's not bad. I'm not saying anything bad about it. He's, he's done really well as it is. I'm just saying if you, for the high detail challenge, if you wanted to push it extra, extra further, that's, that would have been really cool to see there. Done a really good job doing the entire scene. Well done. Next up, we've got Abby's submission here. You got the thing uh, from Fantastic Four. There's also some line work. I really love the detail that you've put through each of these, you know, spending the time on each of these little rock textures throughout the entire body. Um, very, very cool there, the way that's done, especially once you get to the rendering and you can see it all put together. And then you've really, you know, this is probably one of the more, more detailed ones I've seen you do, Abby. And um, I really like the way you've done the, the cell shading on each of those shines on there. Really good work on that one. All right, awesome work, Abby. All right, next is Paul Churi. And oh, I love this so much. I, I'm so excited to see this. Um, and yeah, again, this is what it's all about. You know, you I, I know your style well, and um, you've, you've got a very clean, very clean style. So I was very interested to see how you would handle putting those extra details in. You did not disappoint, this is insane. You spent so much time putting every detail, every little bolt into that weapon there. Um, the big bomby knocker thing. Every little strap, every little thread, you know, in her clothing. I love this so much, all through here. The setup of these characters, even the platform she's standing on. Yeah, that's what it's all about. And then you've colored it here top top job have a look at that i love what you've done i hope you've enjoyed doing this because um like i said it's you you're really seeing what you're capable of the potential really pushing yourself further you know i'm, I'm hoping that this helps people you know opens up your eyes more and realize what you can do and how far you can take your work uh when you really really want to you know what i mean Great one to add to your gallery and showcase your art. So awesome work on that one, Paul. Next up, we've got Scott Jackson. I love this. This is so cool seeing your work. Um, you've got this really cool kind of cartoony style going on here. Now you mentioned this is a uh, Mandalorian motorhead uh, rat fink with his sidekick Mad Grogu. So um, this is great. You said this is from your childhood and you really wanted to draw this kind of thing here uh, used to check out these magazines I think it used to be a comic strip and um, this is great to see you pushing yourself with these details I, I haven't seen you do this kind of work yet like this and um, I just I love the, what you've done there with all of that so my top work top job on that one Scott all right next we've got Cy and you've done a bunch of submissions here this is crazy look at this cap here um, you've got Captain America this is so cool to see. I really love this pose. I can see you've really tried to, you know, the details in the in the wings and the, the suit as well. Really love that. Um, you've also got the line work there. I can see you've been pushing yourself a little further. Uh, we've got some more here, Wolverine. I love this one. So here's the fully rendered version here, right? And then you've got the fully detailed inks, uh, line work, I should say, here. And this is where it really shines, where you can see all the details that you've put into this all that extra work you know spending that extra time is what's what it's all about to try and bump up that that quality you know what i mean so that that's a really cool one i love that dr doom i like this one he looks really cool and uh, you've got some variations see i like the line work there as well see that shines here i like this but then when i see this that's really popping for me that line work and I can really see exactly the amount of detail and effort that you've put in throughout that. This is where it really shines. And then there's another variation here. This is like the classic green kind of outfit there. I, I think that's my favorite one there. I really love the way that turned out. Awesome. Gladiator Hulk, have a look at all these details here, spending some time on that background too. And um, he's looking really cool. Just the details in the muscles and the suit. 
and all the clasps really top job there again another different variation of the gladiator hulk here and uh, that is so cool i love that smashing down very cool work there look at that detail nice work um this is cool spider punk this is one of my favorites that you've done so have a look at look at him that's amazing i really love that colors when you put the colors all over that is awesome I hope you don't mind Sai. I just wanted to have a quick look in Photoshop and just I, I just wanted to point out one or two things I thought with the proportions he could have some a way more a lot more energy and um, I, I thought that maybe he needed to be a little lankier and longer or something rather I love this so much this is such a cool pose but like something like that do you see what I mean like that lanky really long arm I'd even make it skinnier and longer and look, he's pushed back more now into the distance more. Oh, this might warp the guitar a bit, but and see if I really suck that in. Oh, the foreshortening can be way more crazy kind of thing. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to muck around with it. Um, so there's the original and there's now. I just really felt like it needed to be like pinched or sucked in and really this could be way smaller in the middle and kind of play around with that foreshortening more you know what I mean anyway I just wanted to point that out and I hope that kind of helps but I really love that one that is so cool with those colors how amazing is that but that's it that's the last submission from that let's get into some critiques now all right our first critique is from Jacob Wells and uh, this is really cool i love what you've done you've got some outlines as well let's have a good look at this look at that detail this is insane i was very impressed by this when i first got it up so especially when you see the inks alone is really really good so um yeah great work on that you've done a top job just going through every little bit through here love seeing all of that look at the time spent and it's very smart the way you've used your black shading through here as well going down because that you know you got strong contrast doing that you know very strong contrast through this um and that's that's what can make your character pop and really lift off that page it's your dragon and it can have its own proportions however you want i suppose but i just thought i was looking at this shoulder here and this one i feel like they're just a little too close together compared to his head you know scale wise so I would personally have him much broader. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Like I said, it's a personal choice thing, but that's just what I saw. I, I feel like the proportions between the shoulders, it's just a little small through here. For a massive dragon like that, I would have loved to... See, yeah, he just... I think he seems a little bit more natural to be much broader. Okay. Um, so for some more feedback, I my biggest issue is with the, uh, the color version. I'm not going to change any of the hues or anything like that. I think that's great. So it's more to do with the final piece. It's just, it comes across a little too dark overall. And personally, I probably would have had the wings. I feel like I would have had the placement of those a little different. Um, this one here mainly. I probably actually would have had that lifted up. And let me see if I can quickly draw a rough one in. All right, so I've just quickly raised that other wing up. Um, ignore the anatomy all around here near the shoulder. I didn't get that quite right. But um, personally, it just as a choice out of impact, you know, when, at a first glance, you want it to be as obvious as a dragon as it possibly can be or just as clear as possible. So I would have personally raised that up so it's the wings are just super aggressive too and it's more, you get that uh, more of an impact and that, that kind of wow factor hits you in the face kind of thing you know what i mean that one that's lowered it's just kind of has things off balance for some reason a little bit that's just my little nitpick there but uh, personal choice doesn't mean this is wrong you can have the wing down if you want to and that's totally fine yeah so the main thing i want to talk about is levels so let's have a look at this this final piece right a little bit too dark so what i would do is i would get the levels lighten this right up even that i like that 
and I'm just taking the highlights kind of up on that moon more. You see that? That moon is now way more intense. That's what you want because it needs to be as bright as possible. I'll just press OK on that. And then if I just fade those edges back in, that nice kind of look, um, I think it'd be better. So the idea here is that you want to have this line work to be as prominent as you can. Like you've spent so much time on all these beautiful details that when you get to the original, it's too dark to see them. So everything's too dim. I zoomed in a little so you can see. So before and then after, do you look mainly at the lighting. Now you can see your line work beautifully. Uh, another cool trick is if you put a new layer over the top, set the layer mode to screen. I'm gonna get a soft brush, sample that moon color, kind of like this bluey one. We'll do even make, make it a bit more saturated. That soft brush can be sized up and then we'll just start painting over like this. And you want a bit of that moon glare, but um, this will add a lot of atmosphere to the piece as well. So there's that and we'll take the opacity of that down to about 50%, so it's half as much. So that's without and then with. Do you see that ambience? Looks like it belongs in that setting now. You could also, if you have a cloudy brush, I'm gonna get this kind of yellowy color, um, size it up. You could add some more effects around if it's like smoke, dust, um, wherever you wanna place it, you'd have to be pretty smart with how you, where you're gonna place it and have it belong. So again, I don't wanna to go too crazy and make it overpowering, but it can be really cool for atmosphere. You could even sample this bluish tone and have some breath yeah, from the dragon's mouth because it's like maybe a cold night and it could be like that you know um extra effects like that are always a plus find some specs like this see these grungy specs just have a couple of like maybe i'll sample that saliva and we'll have a couple of dots like that maybe just just really subtle don't go overboard with it but these kind of things will add so much to detail on your piece. Even down here, um, it, could be, it could be a little bit of rubble that's like coming up from where he's just stomped and he's like moving and shuffling on the ground. You know, a little bit of dirt even over the silhouette there. You see that? Like that. Now it looks like he's kind of moving around. You can have more where the tail's moving. And yeah, super intense. So. There's those extra details there. I think that adds a lot more to it. One thing I was going to say about this wing as well, the wings, you know, are, are like a skin fleshy kind of, and it is see-through kind of. Not, not see-through, but like a bat wing. You'll get, uh, if there's a strong light behind it, it will pass through that. So you can lighten up that area. I'll, I'm just going to test it out. You don't have to do this. And I'll just go back to before we did that. So that's before it. And after it, it kind of feels more natural with that moon behind it. It's like the ambient light from the moon is beaming through the wing as well. But that's just an idea. You don't have to do that. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Let me just... So here's your original. And then after some changes, you know what I mean? Really making the most of that line work. You want it to pop. Um, and then there was the other thing I did here with the wing. You could raise the wing up. I recommend that too. Anyway... I'll leave it at that. Awesome work, Jacob, and I hope that helps. All right, next up, we've got Patrick, and you've done the thing from Fantastic Four. Really liking the what you've done here. It's really cool, um, and I thought it'd be, make a good critique. There's a few things I want to kind of talk about with this one. You know, what I really like here, I, I love that you've gone that extra mile with your detailing, uh, really spending some time on each of these rock textures Especially the face, he's got a really cool face. You've done a good job of that. Yeah, I would have loved to see probably a bit more in the background. A, a lot of it is just a little flat. A lot more could go into the rock rendering as well. So, but you can really get that rendering going pretty crazy in the rocks and so on. If that was done throughout the entire thing, it, it'd really add to the detail. 10 times more, you know what I mean? So I've just quickly used levels to try and cap capture your cell shade that you have done. And I've doubled down on it basically to make it more harsher. You can see that it already is bringing into life even more if you just had that a little heavier. 
So that's just a bit of a tip there. If you had your rend your current render a little harder and harsher, it would have worked more. Um, okay, so, but yeah, with the smoke and the background, everything is a little too flat. And the blue, there's not too much going on in that. So if we really worked on even a render through the smoke to make it more mystical, more work in that would have looked really cool. This rocks, really love what you've done through the detailing in the ground. See, that is really, really cool. You've spent good time on that. Now, what I want to talk about here a lot more is the pose. And just for this critique, I would love to talk about the pose and try and show you uh, how we can make it a little more intense. All right. Um, I hope you don't mind. I've done a bit of work just trying to readjust the pose so we can uh, get some intensity. I think that's what it needed. So from the start, his pose is a little too static in the way of um, it's just too straight in front. But he's, I can, I know he's got movement and he's supposed to be running and stomping and smashing the ground and coming at you with a fist. So I just thought if we built up from the sketch, you know, in your original drawing, if you had um, done a bit more with the really throw that arm forward and think of his body movement. Um, and get that intensity. So I've tried to, this is all your drawing. I've just reshaped it basically. So now we've got a body twist. So now there's like a, yeah, a real body twist now. Whereas, you know, before it's a bit too front on, but yeah, really throw that at you. And with a twist of the body this way. So it's a real body motion kind of twist. And it really makes it look like he's charging and he's, he's running really hard. And you can throw this arm way back in the distance more um, because it's down and this one's more like, yeah, really coming at you. Yeah, those that's just some tips there on the setup. I think you could get a really energetic pose doing that. Now, another thing to keep in mind if you are gonna do this kind of thing, um, try not to have this fist crossing over. What I, what I mean is, if I had this fist like over the face like that, that's a that's kind of a no-go. I wouldn't recommend doing that. You can, but personally, I, um, where are we? I think it's much better to leave a little bit of breathing room through here. See that gap? And then your pose reads really well from a distance. You see what I mean? Like if, if you had that as a silhouette, it's a strong pose and it works. So that's, that's kind of what I mean by that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's some tips with the pose there. Um, now I recommend some things I did to this as well is add a little bit more heavy black shading where it needs it. So as these, this arm goes back, you could probably blacken that part out there completely down to the, the arm, right? That's fine. But have it with the rocks as well. So as the rocks bleed in, you can have the shading bleed in with it. So really hammer in some of these rocks like here, see this? And then up through here, you can have them start to get really heavy cracks, like really dark, heavy cracks like this. You see that? And then as it gets up into where it's supposed to be more light, you'd go the other way and you start to thin them out like this. To where you'd even have a break in some of the lines in some of them and that you're going to get a really really good looking some really good looking ink work doing it that way yeah do you see what i mean as i zoom out it's starting to form now and you're starting to see a lot more of that that um, effect take take shape so here lighter crack and then a really dark dense crack there that kind of thing you can even have it like really dark under his chin all right pitch black right under there and then start to have it bleed down in the shadows um like here and as it gets into the center of the chest a bit more of that effect taking place you see right down to where it's pitch black under the chest and you'll it'll make it look like you have that heavy chest folding over the torso itself like that and then you can have some more cracks 
So yeah, that, that kind of thing. Do you see it starting to really form now wherever I'm rendering uh, in the ink work? So that's a good tip for line work. Um, I recommend it because it gets a little, they're too much the same line weight throughout all of the details if you add a little bit more form to the shadows. All right, so that's, uh, that's really the only kind of tips I have on that one. And um, where's your color one? I'll just put that up as well. So there's your color one there as well. And yeah, the rendering. So, all right, I hope that helps, Patrick. That is, yeah, really good work on this one though. And um, yeah, keep it up. All right, last critique is from Elijah. A new patron, by the way. Welcome, Elijah. And I'm glad you're on board. This is awesome. You're a great artist, very talented. And um, these details are top notch. Like I'm really, I really think this is great. You're very clever with the way that you use your um, the black shading, uh, you know, with your line work as well. It's very smart. Looks good. Very edgy, edgy kind of style to that. Great volume in your lines too. So you got lots of thickness to uh, to thin up the top for lightness. You know, really balancing those out. Very smart. I love this. This is great. Uh, right, let's try and have a look, see what I can help you with here. I feel like we could probably, I'm going to start by structuring the pose a little, little more for you. I think more energy, more uh, dynamic. Let's make it more interesting, the pose. Uh, and it, I'm not saying it's not, because it, it is already really great as it is. The thing that really sells it is the details alone. So that's really that's really popping on this. But I just want to show you how we can maybe improve it. Let's let's make it even more crazy. Um, and we'll go from there. So I've, I've actually made it into some sections. I'm going to try and see if we can, let's, let's make this dynamic. Right, I'm going to start by liquefying this like I usually do. And um, I'm just with the torso and the legs. So I've really um, added a lot more energy to the body itself first. So let's do that. And I'm really stretching these legs out. So it looks like he's really in action, you know, ready to, ready to fight. Um, so I'll go with that and we'll press OK. And I think this head just needs to be dropped down more evil like. Okay. And slightly shifted to the left, like his right. So he's, cause he's kind of turning more. So slightly more to this way. And then you really want to have, like I feel like the teeth are just a little low for his skull structure. So I'm going to raise those up and get them up. Now keep in mind because his head's turned a little bit. So this cheek will go out more. Um, the top of his head will also go just slightly out more like that. And this ear will be seen more because it's too, he's turning his head slightly. So I'll just show you a quick before and after of the head uh, changes. And you can kind of see what I've done there. So just making it more evil looking, really dropping it down. I feel like we need a drastic change. I'm just going to do something absolutely bonkers and crazy to see if I can really just do something a little more, even more energetic. I just feel like it needs to go absolutely nuts. So what I'm going to do is really twist this torso um, even more like this. There we go. Now I know it's pretty crazy, but that we do have more energy. So do that. I'll place that head in a little bit better now. There we go. And then I'm gonna place this arm over. Really, let's go absolutely bonkers with the perspective, or a little bit further anyway, um, and try and make this as intense as possible. I feel like we can do a lot more with that hand. You know, extend those fingers out a little further. Then one thing I wanna, uh, point out you can add a lot more edginess to your art if you with the and with the proportions and anatomy right a stylistic choice this is you can actually thin out a lot of very like add a lot of sharp edges to parts of the body so for instance if I was going to I'd probably put a point like a sharper point here I don't know if you see that and it's a really thin wrist and then nice and thin down through here and then your bicep can come out like really kind of crazy like this right and then you add a, a point or an edge 
to that line work like a very sharp one too done it already with the tricep up here but what if you went even more crazy with it like this like it just adds so much more crazy like crazy edges even the look at the shoulder there great example on the shoulder really add some edge to this just go bonkers with it just absolutely think a little bit outside the box and just think what if i just made that super sharp like that you know and see what happens and adding a lot of bumps and things like this to it i just think that looks cool looks really cool and edgy and it's it's um it's fun even with knuckles and things like that like see the knuckle there i'm sharpening it out then we'll go another knuckle like the one there with the bend in the thumb all right and i'll just go really pointy there so we went from that to that do you see the difference in style there just adding a lot it's way more interesting to look at i'd probably even go more crazy in the bicep there so i'm going to bring that up and make it go really pointy and now this arm is looking way more cooler you see that well, it didn't need too much really but you can see what i'm getting at that extra crazy edges like especially down here I'm just pulling out some of the sharper points, just making it look cool. You've got a really cool edgy style. I'm just trying to enhance that for you and make it even more crazy. So let's go, there's the original and then now. So I was just trying to add a lot more energy in the pose overall. So the way he's kind of hunched over more, more aggressive and he's more like coming at you kind of thing and he's ready to fight. Um, more intense and more crazy basically. So. Yeah, you've done a really, really good job there. So in the, uh, you'd probably, you'd obviously do this in the sketching stage when, you, when you're first drawing and try and keep it loose and come up with your original gesture or sketch really loose until you feel like you've got that kind of energy. And once you feel it, you'll know it. And once you feel it, then bring it to complete inks and final colors and de uh, final details, I mean, sorry. And then you'll be right. Uh, yeah, you've absolutely nailed it. I really love your piece here. Awesome work there, Elijah. And welcome again. Welcome. Hope that helps. That was so cool. Really great to see everyone's work there. You all did just such an amazing job. Um, this high detail challenge is... Um, this is probably something I might do like once a year for you guys. We'll include it into the, the annual kind of repeat process because this is a big, a big learning you know there's a lot you can learn from this and i think it's an important project to practice so we'll probably do this again um i love all of these and you really you all really pushed yourself um super proud of everyone here so yeah great work um these are amazing and uh yeah so if you are new to these monthly projects you'd love to join in um yeah feel free to jump on board head over to patreon.com slash patrick brown uh, you can yeah sign up um, there's lots going on always new videos every fortnight and I'm doing tutorials character draw videos um, a bit of everything really I give a lot of feedback we do feedback frenzy um, and I do these monthly projects where I also give feedback and critiques um, there's always something going on and you get my art uh, Photoshop documents and high res versions of all of the art that I make so uh, yeah I put that all through patreon anyway um, yeah thank you so much for watching uh, I hope you enjoyed all of these and uh, yeah see you in the next video all right bye everyone <laughs>